And out of those moments we showed you at the top of the show, what was supposed to be a meet and greet for Mayor Pete Buttigieg turned into a full-fledged rally yesterday. More than 1,600 people came out to see him in Des Moines, Iowa, but his event was interrupted twice by two anti-gay protesters, at least one of whom showed up to two of Buttigieg's event yesterday, stopping the mayor's speech when he mentioned his right to marry his husband. And as somebody very much enjoying the first year of married life, I would say freedom is what's at stake in the idea of whether a county clerk gets to tell you who you ought to marry. Speaking of things, hello again. Speaking of things that are at stake that do not belong to a single political party. You know, the good news is, the condition of my soul is in the hands of God, but the Iowa caucuses are up to you. Our marriage exists by the grace of a single vote on the U.S. Supreme Court. And on this 10th anniversary of Iowa breaking some ground in that regard, I would like to say thank you. Yeah, we got it. Promise you, we got it. Remember the beauty of our democracy. Everyone here gets the exact same voice and vote. At least okay. you, yeah, we've uh, watched a lot of political candidates. What do you make of his just raw political performance? That's pretty good. He really does seem to have some of the it that you need if you're going to propel forward. He stayed on his feet, and clearly it's something that he was answering from the heart and has thought about. And just, I didn't know, I was educated this week just through his interview with Rachel Maddow about his own journey mm. with coming out. And I didn't realize that he had still been closeted when he served in Afghanistan and then came out when he returned home and said, you know, life is just too short. And it was really a very moving interview. And then you see how comfortable he is there with himself. And he seems like a person who is very comfortable with himself. Th that is exactly it, Elise. He is thoroughly comfortable with himself. He's thoroughly human. He's thoroughly approachable. When he was on with us about a month ago, I asked him off air, I said, what did you fear most? going to Afghanistan or telling your parents that you were gay. And he paused for a second and he said, wow. He said, you know, he said, I was trembling. I was sweating. Mm. He said, I was so fearful. And he paused and he said, but my parents were great. <laughs> And uh, one of those moments you say, wow, this guy's got it. Well, and also what he did right there in front of a thousand yeah. people, he exposed hate with love. Mm. And he did it beautifully, pastorally. He did it in a way that made you want to be there with him. And I'm going to tell you, as much as the Republicans completely misunderstood Barack Obama and had no idea how to handle an African-American Democratic nominee, they will not be able to handle this guy because he is truly working from a good center and has the words and the education and the articulation and the grounding to express it to people who even don't understand him. It's called depth, it's called moral compass, it's called faith, and it's called love for America. And he is going to be very hard to handle if they try and take him on for something that he is absolutely not embarrassed about. In fact, he embraces who he is and he embraces his God. This is the bottom line. And the fact that that protester and Republicans might have been watching thinking this is the moment he goes down because everyone will expose his... No. It's not going to happen. For an interesting exercise, by the way, let's, compete, uh, let's compare um, addressing hate with love, Mayor Pete's reaction to protesters, to Donald Trump and how he conducted himself on the campaign trail with protesters in 2016. Well, if you see somebody getting ready to throw a tomato, knock the crap out of them, would you? Seriously. I will pay for the legal fees, I promise. Go home to mommy. Bye. You know, we do all have a First Amendment right, and they really violate our First Amendment right, but what are you going to do, right? We're not allowed to punch back anymore. I love the old days. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. I mentioned food stamps, and that guy who's seriously overweight went crazy. He went crazy. Go home to mommy. Go home. Bye. Go home to mommy. Go home to mommy. Tell her to tuck you in bed. 
Nasty little, I'll tell you, nasty people. Try not to hurt them. If you do, I'll defend you in court. Don't worry about it. It's a comedy show. It's a comedy show with the press until someone gets hurt. Uh, Rick Tyner, uh, Tyler, final thought on this. Um, you know, I don't want to overstate the Mayor Pete moment, but it did sort of remind me of John McCain uh, when on the campaign trail he was being confronted by someone calling Barack Obama a Muslim and he just said no. Um, there are ways to confront hate, and uh, Trump has won. And this young candidate has another. Yeah, absolutely, Meekin. And, and I don't, I don't really know what the purpose is. I mean, if you're gonna, uh, if we want to start going down this road, I mean, we can look at the envy, greed, lust, sloth, pride, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, and then the president. I think he's mastered all of them. And uh, you know, so if if he's trying to get the evangelicals to peel away, uh, they ought to look at they ought to look at Donald Trump very closely. Mm -hmm. You know what, Mika, too, the, the chant we heard about Sodom and Gomorrah is like, like a chant from a different time. Right. Yeah. And by that I mean we had an NBC Wall Street Journal poll just a couple of weeks ago that shows fully 70%, 70 percent, seven zero, of all Americans, not just yeah. Democrats, not just progressives, of all Americans are comfortable with a gay presidential candidate and thereby a gay president. So you can chant that to a small sliver of the electorate. But that's falling the on problem deaf ears is he has so many other things to, to many, say. Many Americans. He, he has so many other things to say about what he would do that this is not what he's running on. It's not a story. It's no. a side note a to who he is. Yeah, he, and I want to point out, uh, Elise, and then uh, take it up. Uh, what the person said to McCain in that moment was not that he was a Muslim, but he said it as if it was disparaging. Right. And McCain wouldn't have it. And it was beautiful. Elise? No, I, it makes me, that moment makes me proud of our country because you do realize how far we've come just from the early 2000s until now when it comes to equal rights for all Americans. And I think that the fact that we have a strong contender for the Democratic candidacy for president who is openly gay and proud of it and wants everyone to accept it as it's a non-issue, as it should be. It should not be an issue. And is so easy, it so easily deflects that kind of hate. It's just an impressive moment, I think, for our country. All right, we've got a lot to get to this morning. Uh, still ahead on Morning Joe, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is again threading the needle between Democrats in Washington, hyper-focused on the presidential investigations and Democrats around the nation who maybe aren't. We'll show you her efforts to walk that line. You're watching Morning Joe. We'll be right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.